you call yourself a snake? It's the 2K Sports Pregame Show. Hello and welcome. Glad you could join us here on 2K Sports. I'm your host, Ernie Johnson. Next to me, Kenny the Jet Smith and Shaquille O'Neal. And on tap tonight, it's the Cleveland Cavaliers going up against the New York Knicks. For New York, they are hungry for a win here. Last season, they got swept by this team. Four straight losses, something they haven't forgotten. Still a little strange to see D. Wade out of a Heat uniform, but we'll get to see him tonight. As his career winds down, where do you see him on the list of all-time shooting guards? Let's see, three-time champion, one finals MVP. I'm going to say he's the third best shooting guard in the modern era. Would you like to tell us who the first two are? I would never say Mike and Kobe. Oh, okay. I well, see, I, I don't consider uh, Michael the modern era because after 2000s, I'm saying he's not the modern anymore. So I would say that Dwayne would be the second best shooting guard in the modern era. Well, it depends on what you call modern. Exactly. Well, anything, I think anything, the 90s are pretty modern. Exactly. I mean, the last 20 years, yes. that's pretty modern. Do you have a TV from the 90s in your house? Uh, that's three, not modern. Three of them. Exactly. From the 90s? <laughs> yes. Oh, three my God. from the 90s. Yes. No. And, yeah, like my buddy. Like There's my buddy nothing says, in my house. I one agree of them, with you, Ernie. And my non-working one is on Don't top be a of millennial. working one. Don't forget where you come from, millennial I man. I'm a yeah. millennial guy. No, it's so. right over there next He's to my... He's number two. It's right over there next to my transistor radio. He's number two. Michael is not modern anymore. No, no. A track player and yeah. my and my toaster oven. And why is he They're still selling right shoes? And if he's not modern, got yeah. him, Judge no. Ernie. Yeah. Michael still has an earring, a loop earring in his ear, he's but he's still modern. selling shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Kevin Harlan. Two K Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the NBA. Live coverage of the NBA here on 2K Sports. A happy Sunday evening to you and yours. Hi, everyone. This is Kevin Harlan with Chris Weber and Greg Anthony, our sideline reporter, David Aldridge. Looking at the last game for the New York Knicks, it was a win against the Nets. And there wasn't much question as to how that game was going to turn out. They absolutely put the hammer down on them. And how about the points they put up? I mean, they were aggressive. In fact, at times, overwhelming. Well, think about this. They were extremely versatile in their approach, taking what the defense allowed. We are nearly ready for the tip-off, but first, let's hear from our very own David Aldridge. D.A., it's all yours. Well, Kevin, Tristan Thompson is one of the elite offensive rebounders in the league. He said, for me, it's always see ball, get ball, and just bring the energy. And be that guy that when I check in, guys on the other team are like, oh, no, he's here tonight? That's my mentality. Kevin? Thanks, D.A., and clearly Thompson knows his role on this team. Got to admire how hard he goes on the glass. And in these early stages, Chris, of the season, how quickly do you start to get a sense of where your team stands and how good they can be or how bad they might be? I would say that first 20 games is a really good kind of litmus test. Gives you a pretty good gauge to see where your team is. You're going to get to play against teams from both conferences. You have some really good teams and bad teams in that mix. So you kind of see how you play in all situations. Those first 20 games, you establish who you are. So Cleveland will get the first possession. All fueled up and ready to go. Let's check out who's on the floor, courtesy of Gatorade. On the court for the Knicks, Porzingis and Hernan Gomez are together down low. Tim Hardaway Jr. out there with Ramon Sessions. And it's Lee in at the three slot. Sinks it, and the shot from Porzingis. Uh, I don't think we'll ever see another seven-foot-three player who can drain the three like Porzingis. He, he takes the idea of that inside-outside threat to a whole nother level. Oh, Kev, he put some anger <laughs> behind that one. You're telling me. No good from Lee. 
on defense, New York. Wallace with it, out guarded by Porzingis. Offensive rebound, James. That's his second shot and his second basket. He's two for two. Well, now look here, you like seeing James track down these rebounds, showing true tenacity on the offensive glass. Out to the right wing. And Porzingis, here we go. And a wide open look for Lee. Again, the miss by Lee. Cavaliers have gone two for four from the field so far today. And he got the whistle, so he'll have a three-point play opportunity. Well, come on. We all know LeBron is used to getting fouled, but it's just amazing how he keeps his focus. Such a powerful player. And when you're scouting a player like LeBron James, Chris, how do you defend him? What, what's the plan? Wow, you got to stay in front of him. Now try to force him to take bad shots. Tell Find the trainer to get the ice bath the ready. And make sure One you got shot. some extra tape. And all this is easier said than done. A little over a minute gone here in the first quarter. The Knicks have gone one of three from the field to start this one so far. Lee, left side. They get it again. Hernan Gomez. Now James is just a sensational shot blocker. You better check your rear view mirror when you join to the hole. And finally they hit one. Defensive rebounding, just such a crucial part of the game. I, I tell you what, it's like football. Having a, a third and 13 and them running up the gut. I, it, it just frustrates the defense. You have to hate giving up second chance points. It's demoralizing. After basically, I mean, you had to stop. Well, he caught him in stride with the lead pass. Now that was time. Here's Crowder. Knicks with the rebound. This game against Cleveland is the first time they've met this season. Yeah, and this game kicks off a four-game season series between the two teams. Yeah, I, I expect this first one to be a battle of wills, though. I mean, each side trying to gain the upper hand, not just for now, but for the rest of the series. Yeah, getting theirs before the defense can set up. Now, that's just the aggressiveness of transition, making sure they come away with points. New York's gone one of five from downtown in the first quarter. Points out there have been hard to come by. They double him with LeBron. Knocks it loose. Lee with the ball. Guarded now by Kevin Love. That misses, and he's 0 for 4. Maybe he should look to pass the ball right now and get his teammates involved, because right now, his shot's not falling. He's ice cold. Good on the shot. Love's got his first bucket of the night. And the story here, Kevin, early on is how well they've shot the basketball. James against Lee. Now Cleveland moving it up. LeBron leading the charge. The shot's good from Smith. A, a pretty simple solution to ending this run. It would just be getting back and actually playing some defense. Knicks trail by eight. And Sessions kicks to Hardaway. No good off the front iron. That's a shot he's got to hit. You don't get many looks better from that range. Shot by Crowder, no good. Does well to burrow his way into the post, but loses his touch on the finish. Now here is Hardaway. No Out scoring yet from him, but that's likely to change. And here we can now take a look at how the ratio was between the threes and the twos last season for the Cavaliers. And they really based almost their entire offense around the three-point shot. Spread the floor, space the defense, and if the deep shots aren't falling, at least it should open things up inside. And here in the first quarter, with a little over three and a half minutes played, the wide-open look here for Perzingis. The shot's good. Sessions making him pay. Nice way to start the evening. His number's getting called, and for good reason. Well, yeah, he's a guy who can carry you for stretches, long stretches in this game. You want to get him involved early and often. Here's Sessions after the made shot from Jay Crowder. Sessions with it, out guarded by Crowder. Sessions passes to Hernan Gomez. No stopping him there. Jams it in as he's fouled. Chance now for a three-point play. That's on LeBron James. And if that doesn't get them fired up, guys, nothing will. Greg, just what the doctor ordered, huh? Some high-flying annex to narrow the deficit. Well, also a miscommunication on defense. No one rotates over. See ya.
And that one misses. And, and coming out of the offseason where the Knicks had a really long to-do list, you knew they were going to shake things up and made some moves in free agency and, and realized they needed to build around Porzingis going forward. And the three ball is good. How on earth did they let him get that wide open? And Crowder with the basket on the assist by Calderon. Crowder's got his second bucket. At six foot seven, Jay Crowder weighs as much as some centers. He's built for contact. And Crowder comes up to help. Hernan Gomez. Good D by James. And James was needed badly for the Knicks. And they did that starting with the front office. Yeah, Knicks fans can have a dire outlook at times, but the team still has a solid foundation. It will take some time for the team to become a true contender again, but having players not be at odds with the front office, definitely a good start. The Cavaliers shooting their second and third shots at the line right here. And they were 75% from the line a season ago. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. Free throw, good, Crowder. Well, you see a lot of hard-nosed players coming out of Marquette. You know, Jay Crowder certainly falls in that category. 6'6", 235, I mean, he's just a brick wall. Not a guy you want to tangle with. And both free throws, good from Crowder. And Crowder said he wasn't always in such great shape, Chris. He was actually overweight, he says, in high school. He has a great father who was a pro player, and his father helped him train. I mean, he lost all that bad weight and, and kept that good muscle. Well, you, you have to like their work on the boards, Kevin, particularly here to start the game. With a break in the action, let's show you the teams with the most second-chance points last year. In third, the Knicks. This was a team that was really savvy when it came to getting position under the boards and then getting those offensive putbacks. Two shots. The first one falls. And this Cavs payroll last season. I mean, the highest in NBA history with luxury tax penalties in the tens of millions. And we saw some friction as they looked to control salary and LeBron pushed them to add more talent. Both good from the line that time. And the Cavaliers were able to add some key veteran help at the trade deadline. Yeah, some key contributors they were able to get off of waivers as well. That's how the rich get richer. But with LeBron talking about the team being top. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> Look out. It's a beautiful low. jam. And credit Crowder with his activity disrupting the play. He got them out and running that time. And that replay sponsored by Under Armour. Another Unleash Chaos moment, giving us an excellent perspective on the play. And the Knicks decide to take their first time out here. And Jay Crowder, one of the bigger pieces in the trade that brought him to Cleveland, always seemed to be the odd man out with the revamped roster in Boston. But he's got some strength and length on that wing, also some toughness and depth. take a look at some stats for Jay Crowder. Good season for him last year. Came in about 14 points per. Five rebounds and two assists. And guys, he's making winning plays. It's as simple as that. Not a star player per se, but he makes his presence felt. Well, yeah, lately he's been overachieving a little bit. Hopefully this is a sign of greater things to come. 
And wait to finish and cut into that lead a little bit. Yeah, but look at the, ba the basket, guys, still shaking. The Knicks have shot just one free throw, missing that one earlier. No good on the free throw. And for the Cavs, getting Crowder in the deal was a big part of why they went with it. He's helped fill a couple of holes Cleveland had, and he's also on a friendly contract, so he'll be a part of this team down the road. It's stolen by Smith, and Smith with a clear path to the hoop, and the jam by J.R. Smith. Now, wait a minute. He was the former 2005 NBA slam dunk contestant, right? Taking flight. Oh, he's just a high-flying dunk artist. Knicks trail by 13. It's stolen by Smith. Love outside. Here's Calderon. That falls. Great assist by Love. Love's got five assists tonight. And the defense looks soft early on. They've got to summon up a little more sense of urgency. And that one's good. Sessions. Sessions has got his first points in this one. And really, it's been a major aspect of their offense in the early stages here. Their success working the ball inside and getting points from close range. He dishes it to Hardaway. To the middle. Shots good by Hernan Gomez. Hernan Gomez has got eight points. You can't pass up a shot from such short range. Here's Love. That shot missing. So New York will take it the other way. And that one gives them a plus five rebound advantage, Kevin. Sessions against Calderon. Three on three over Hardaway. Crowder. It's good on the putback. And the Cavaliers lead by 15. Yeah, off to a strong start here early. Six points off second chance buckets. The Knicks shooting well right out of the gates here at around 50%. They get a hand on it. And Crowder comes up to help. Puts it up from seven. Hernan Gomez. It's rebounded by Cleveland. Defeated by the Pelicans in their last game. They'll try to put that one behind them. And they couldn't get stops when they needed to. The opposition just too comfortable shooting the basketball. And that's what can happen on the road. You have to be aggressive and try to disrupt them out of their normal routine. Sessions. Tough sequence there. They just couldn't get it to fall. Cleveland leading by 15. And Crowder gets it to go on the assist by Love. And 12 points for Jay Crowder. And boy, have they come out strong, really pounding the offensive board for second chance points. A three from Porzingis. Buries the long range jumper. He's given them a nice lift this quarter. The shots are falling for him. The drive by James and finished off by LeBron. Methodical in their approach. They have absolutely owned this first quarter. Well, I love how they've done it. They built this huge lead with points in the paint, dominating physically. Four on three break. He just cannot miss. Eight up, eight in. Flawless. Now he's put up a show so far to begin this one. He has not missed one yet. And Teron Lou thrown right into the fire as the head coach of the Cavaliers, and he led them to a title in his rookie year as a head coach. Yeah, it, it was a whirlwind, but he's so organized. He knew the changes he wanted to make. Coming in and leading a championship team, he was up for the task. New York calls timeout. Yeah, he, he's got to make some adjustments here. Just too easy to score in the lane against them right now. Well, well, I think the first thing they need to talk about are the rotations. There's a lot of miscommunication out there. And LeBron James has openly stated very publicly, especially last year in the finals, he is chasing Michael Jordan. He wants to be the best ever. And, and at this point, he might be top two. <laughs> Jordan with six titles, hard to see LeBron surpassing that. But just to be in the conversation 
with the GOAT is an achievement in and of itself. It's a completely new group on the floor for the Cavaliers. Here's Cantor. Last game he had 12. Some nice passing by New York here. And the Cavaliers pushing it up now. Here's Shumpert. It's rebounded by New York, and it's out of bounds. The Knicks able to retain possession here. Knicks trail by 20. Here's Nilakina. They double him with Shumpert. McDermott for three. And, and trailing here in the first, you'd like to see them be a little more aggressive on the offensive glass. Wade gets the bucket. Yeah, they are really starting to push it now. Here's Nilakina. Nine points last game. Poked away. And here we go. Fast break. Wade's got it. And the bucket counts. Three-point chance here. Yeah, second chance points. A huge issue right now. They're getting steamrolled inside. And you watch Wade and know he isn't the same player he was back when he averaged 30 a game. But in short burst, he can still give you a glimpse of that old flash. He knows when and how to dial it up when the game is on the line. Mind the lanes. Mind the lanes. One shot. That's good from Wade. And Chris, as you said, Wade can still take over a game for a short period of time. There are many players that are scarier with the ball in their hands, with the game on the line than Wade. He just has a knack for coming up big when his team needs him. Tipped away. Pass to Nilakina. Cantor with a screen on Wade. Shot clock at five. Here's Nilakina. And a foul called on the shot. Got him on the way up that time, so he'll shoot two right here. That's on Dwayne Wade. And Frank Nielakina out of France, played pro ball in Germany, and a lot of fans in the U.S. might not be as familiar with him, but for NBA execs and scouts, that's their job. Nielakina has a game worthy of their attention. No good on the free throw. In a draft stock with point guards, Neely Kina's court vision, Greg, might be the best of them all. I mean, he's a true, pure point guard. At the same time, a good shooter. The length to defend wings, so that versatility makes him one of the more valuable prospects. Good on the second free throw. And the potential that Nila Kina has is really cause to be exciting. A lengthy point guard who can run the offense well. And if he bulks up, look out for this guy. They're finding lanes to the hoop now with consistency. Five buckets in a row from the paint. And the pass to McDermott. Knocked away. It's stolen by Wade. Jumps up. And it's Green slamming it down. And from the opening tip, they just crushed it. Yeah, you see it now on the scoreboard. Yeah, particularly on offense, where they've been completely in sync. Terrific first quarter. McDermott, no one around him. Not enough on that one as it misses. 
I'm sure he'd say to himself, no excuse for missing that shot, even when it's such a clean look. Thompson misses. I like the shot selection on that one, despite the miss. New York shooting their fifth and sixth free throws of the game. Yeah, and 79% from the line as a team a season ago. Pretty reliable in that regard. Two shots. Last on the first. The first free throw is good. And what was a wild ride of an offseason for the Knicks ultimately results in a regime change. Yeah, I mean, players butting heads with, with executives, and when it came down to it, things just needed to change. If the Knicks picked the Zen master over Porzingis, fans might have rioted in New York City, and hopefully the franchise can kind of start to right the ship. Yeah, that was the third straight high-percentage look the defense has allowed. The, the defenders have got to start putting bodies on bodies. Cancer kicks to O'Quinn. Forty-six seconds left in the first quarter of the game. And it's Shumpert penetrating. He hangs in there and cashes in on the second chance points. They are just killing him on the interior. They've been a little too casual with the ball out there. Yeah, but you can't force that square peg into the round hole. Oftentimes, you just got to make that first simple pass and get a rhythm from that. Thompson comes with the double team. Five to shoot. Tipped away. Passed away. That's in. Coming off the assist from Thompson. Nine points for Dwayne Wade. Wade is an athletic beast. Look how he just demonstrates his impressive quickness on that drive right there. Oh, Quinn, the pass to Baker. To the paint. And that's it for the first quarter in what's been a very lopsided game. Cavaliers on top, just dominating this one. It's the NBA on 2K Sports from Quicken Loans Arena. And we got a chance to hear from LeBron James about the hard work and preparation he brings into every game. Go back and I'm able to, um, you know, read this kind of report, you know, and, and also when I get to the arena, I also watch more film on, on each and every guy that's going to be playing. Um, guys that I know I may be, um, you know, matched up against, you know, throughout the night. So um, I'm not surprised by anything if it happens throughout the game. So um, it's a lot of preparation that goes in, you know, to just one game, just trying to get one win, but that's what it takes to then get. I think you'd have to say the preparation really shows on the court in his play, and rarely does he look surprised out there or caught off guard. And, and Kevin, that's really just the mark of a total pro, and, and I don't think oftentimes the fans appreciate how much goes in in terms of preparation. Some guys get it, and some guys don't, but, but he's a perfect example of what proper preparation means in terms of preventing a poor performance. And welcome back. It's been all one-sided so far through the first quarter as our second quarter gets underway. And for the Cavaliers, this has been the game they wanted to have. I mean, a solid first quarter, especially looking at that plus turnover ratio. Yeah, aggressive on D, efficient on offense. They bought out to an early lead. Amon Shumpert is out there with Green. Then it's Thompson. Then there's Kyle Korver. And it's Wade in at the point. That's the group for Cleveland going right now here in the second. And we've got an update here, so let's check in with David Aldridge reporting from the sideline. Guys, Tristan Thompson has one of the longest consecutive games played streaks in NBA history. He said, the mind's a powerful thing, and if you tell your brain everything is all right, you'd be surprised on the stuff you can achieve. We have the mental toughness to push through our limits. That's how you become great and test yourself as a player. 
Kevin? Well, David Thompson, certainly a mentally strong player. Always nice to have someone you can rely on night in and night out. Plus eight in the rebound differential. One more reason why they're in control. Another bucket down low. They've been the aggressors taking the ball inside and attacking at the rim. Now, here's O'Quinn. He's tightly guarded, and the whistle blows. It's going to be on Jeff Green. That's his first foul. Kuzminskis, he's checked in for New York. And we're now about a minute and a half into the second quarter. They set the pick. Knocked loose, and it goes out of bounds. Last touch by Green. And the Knicks with possession here. Five on the clock. New York needs to get off a shot. McDermott. And not sure what he was thinking there. Green dishes to... Oh, Ooh. you see that? He's <laughs> Shumpert is a tremendous athlete. See how effortless that was? Getting up and making a poster. The Knicks have gone 0-3 and are still looking for that first bucket here in the second quarter. Well, we talk so much about what it's like on the floor, Chris, but I, I wonder what it was like off the floor when you were on the bench watching the team play and, and what was going through your head and mind. What did you and your teammates talk about as you were on the bench taking a rest and watching the game go on? It, it depends on which game. You know, if you're in L.A. and, and you see, uh, you know, Eddie Murphy and Rihanna <laughs> walk in, you're going to say, hey, look at uh, Beyonce and Jay over there. Or, you know... Um, if you're watching a great play and you see a guy dunk on your teammate, you're not going to get too excited, but you're going to whisper to your teammate, man, did you see that? That's crazy. Or, you know, you're pumping up guys because they've been working so hard in practice and it's a guy who's getting his first time to kind of get in and get a good run. So you're cheering him on. And so being on the bench, you know, it's a lot of fun. You have to stay focused and ready to re-enter the game. But part of that job on the bench is to keep the energy of the bench, and that's to keep guys encouraged, to be loose, uh, to have fun. And uh, so it's a lot of fun being on the bench. And more fun when you're winning than losing, but a lot of fun being on the bench encouraging guys. And physically, there's no doubt they've been the stronger team. A plus-10 rebound advantage tells you all you need to know. Thompson with the bucket. Well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. They keep getting it in the paint and continue to score consistently. Thompson comes with the double team. And Tristan Thompson gets the whistle that time. That's foul number two for him. The Knicks making a switch here. Hardaway's checked in. Here's Nilakina. Wade is covering. And here we go. Thompson heading to the hoop. And it's Thompson with the jam. Thompson is a strong big man. He's amazing at fending off defenders. New York's gone 0-3 from beyond the arc to start the second quarter. Here's Nilakina. Wade is covering. Here's Kuzminskis. They get the rebound. Cantor's shot is off. Now that's how you protect the rim. Stand your ground and make him alter his release. Here's Korver. And he gets that one to go off the front iron. Korver's got his first bucket of the night. Just increasing their advantage. And right now, they're in a zone on both ends. Oh, that's why you see them flexing a little bit. They're feeling good about how they've dominated. Pass to Kuzminskis. New York moving it around. Six on the shot clock. Cantor sets the pick for Hardaway. There's the double team with Korver. And it's going to be out of bounds. The Knicks will retain possession. These are the players who had the most success from deep last season. Kyle Korver on top. And getting that spot at the top of the list was such a huge accomplishment. What a year it was for him from behind the arc. Catching up on the changes for Cleveland. Jay Crowder's checked in for Green. James comes in for Shumper. And it's Calderon in for Kyle Korver. All right, a chance to check out the numbers for James. He's coming off an excellent season. He averaged about 26 points a game last year. Eight assists and eight rebounds. 
and he's been putting up points with regularity. I mean, that's what they depend on, his killer instinct on offense. Yeah, anytime this club needs a basket, he's their go-to guy, just an irrepressible, prolific score. New York shooting only 31%. Their offense really struggling to put possessions together. Porzingis, and the dunk by Porzingis! And the one-hand slam just looks so pretty when it's in his hand, and he's the one. Oh! That oh, oh, yeah. Wow. Jumped out of the gym. And, and there's no question that James is one of the best dunkers ever. A forceful finisher who loves showing off his athleticism. And stolen by LeBron. Kicks it to Thompson. Lee against James. Poke loose. Yeah, good job. Just staying alert there, snatching up that long rebound. Lee outside. For the finish. And Thompson throws it down. Thompson has excellent instincts on defense. He's not afraid to get his hands dirty to try to come up with steals. New York's got nothing but zeros from long range in the second quarter. 0 of 4. Here's Persingas and the dunk by Persingas. Yeah, and he wasn't about to do anything that would get him in trouble there. Nope, uh, up and in with a one-hand uh, finish, uh, the most basic possible. And for the contending teams like the Cavs, the buyout market has proven to be critical, a very important way to add talent around the deadline. Yeah, think about what the Cavs did last season. I mean, they got D. Williams, Andrew Bogut, just what they needed, playmaking and shot blocking. Unfortunately, Bogut got Two hurt. Two shots. Still, those veteran pieces can make a big difference. And the first one at the line is good. LeBron continues to add to his legacy. A dominant player on both ends of the floor. Love's checked in for the Cavaliers. Smith comes in for Dwayne Wade. And the Knicks making a change here as well. Herning Gomez is checked in. Both free throws good from James. And one strength, Greg, that this Knicks team has enjoyed the last couple of years has been their ability to win the rebounding game. And that's back-to-back -back seasons, Kevin, in, in the top ten for rebounding in terms of the Knicks. And it was something they wanted to improve upon starting a few years ago. They've changed their rebounding trouble into a big asset moving forward. New York shooting is definitely lagging at the moment. They're just 30% in the second quarter. And here we go. LeBron heading to the hoop and finished off by LeBron. James is just a versatile scorer. When he's feeling it, get out of the way and let him do his thing. And Sessions kicks to Porzingis. And the three off target. Well, it appears as though he has lost his touch a little after connecting on two in the first quarter. Here's Crowder. And that one is good with the extra effort on the glass. Crowder's got 14 points for the game. And Sessions kicks to Hernan Gomez. Here's Lee outside. Basket made just his second this contest. He's two for seven now. How about the passing? They are moving the ball without any thought, without any individual agenda. And defensively, guys, they've been unable to shut down the middle. On the wing, Lee fires the three. The shot's good. Sessions making the play. Sessions has got his seventh assist here tonight. Here's James. Played in with a nice touch off the glass. LeBron's got 29 in the game. This is an amazing run he's on. It's like he's been the only guy on the floor this quarter. And Sessions kicks to Lee. Pass to Hernan Gomez. Picked by Lee. And here's Przingis for a three. And again, New York with the triple. And that's what you give up when you don't fight over the screen. A lot of times your defense is your offense. Your offense is your defense. This is poor decision making right here. Can't let him have that shot. Also might have been a lack of effort. Persingas with a screen on LeBron. Sessions passes to Persingas. Top of the key jumper, no good. They've shown some strength in the paint today. Their work on the boards has been impressive. LeBron, that's a two-pointer. 
Misses off the left iron. I don't care who it is. You can't leave him wide open from that range. And now the Cavaliers. Fast break. James with the ball. And James is great at staying alert on defense, pouncing on any opportunity he sees to swipe the ball. So it's the Knicks now. And Sessions kicks to Porzingis. No good on the three. Well, Cleveland shooting an unbelievable 70%. You won't see a performance like this too often. So far, we've seen them be a bit careless with the ball. Simply put, out of control is how they've played thus far. They're going to have to reel it in and show some more discipline. That doesn't go either for Brzingis. And it's the Cavaliers with the ball. Now Sessions. Outside, Brzingis. Now the pass to Hernan Gomez. No one near Sessions as he lets it fly. And the wing jumper offline. Here's Love. And out of bounds as the Knicks gain possession. And a look here at the shot chart for James. And the three-point game stands out as a major sore spot. It just has not been falling for him. I think at this point, you start to get away from that shot. Try to engage in other parts of the offense. You don't want to hurt your team if that long ball isn't there. The Knicks shooting at 36% on the night. They've got to step it up offensively. They double him with love. And stolen by LeBron. And finished off by LeBron. Uh, James is unreal in fast break situations. Impossible to contain when he's off and running. So it's the Knicks now. They'll host the Denver Nuggets after this one. That game marks the start of a five-game homestand. The longest of the season. Sessions passes to Persingas. Lee outside. No good on the shot. So Cleveland will take it the other way. And offensively, they've gotten stuck on the perimeter. Falling in love with the jumper. Love moves the ball so well, especially when he spots an open man. And Sessions kicks to Hernan Gomez. A three from Porzingis. And it goes out of bounds. That one off Porzingis. And watching Porzingis play, you, you know, you forget how tall he really is in terms of how he moves. You know, not only how quick he is, but also that skill set. Incredible that a player his size won the skills competition in last year's All-Star festivities. Looking at who's out there now for the Knicks. Kyle O'Quinn is checked in for Hernan Gomez. Doug McDermott comes in for Courtney Lee. And it's Neil Aquina in for Sessions. It's been a pretty tough stretch for them. And this will be an important possession. It's really essential. They put a stop to this run, and the best way to do it is by great execution. And that is what fools a lot of NBA fans about Porzingis. Most of the highlights, Greg, you see are his blocks and putback dunks. But if you watch his game, you see that skill level. It's rare to see a player who's the complete package like Porzingis. I mean, he's fluid. He's got the easy-looking shot. It, it almost looks like he's a guard shooting the basketball, comfortable creating for himself or playing off others. Got a piece of it. And it's going to be out of bounds. The Knicks will retain possession. And let's take a quick look now at some stats for Love. Last season, he played outstanding. Eighth in rebounding. And he'd make you pay every time he went to the line. Top 20 in free throw percentage. He was a top 10 rebounder last season for good reason. He's an incredibly intense guy to compete with. And, uh, and, and for a full game, too. I mean, just nonstop. Just four to shoot. Takes a shot at the elbow. Nila Kina gets the bucket. Nila Kina's got five points so far. Yeah, you got to honor Nila Kina from mid-range. He is a quick decision maker who will cash in if you give him space. And one thing I liked in the first quarter was their aggressiveness to draw the contact, putting the defense on the defensive. Here's Love and plenty of contact on the shot. So two free throws coming up. New York called for the foul. Well, yeah, and think about it. Over time, Love has developed into a reliable stretch four. He's a lethal shooter. He can also hit the glass. And if he goes in the post, he can knock it down in there once in a while, too. Now, gentlemen, 
Two shots. Two shots. And he knocks down the first one. And with Tristan Thompson and Kevin Love, the Cavs have some elite offensive rebounders able to create extra offensive possessions. Well, their offensive rebounding rate fell off quite a bit last season from ninth uh, best to 20th. I mean, they just got smaller without Mozgov and some of the other seven footers they have, and, uh, and other teams prepare for them. And he makes both free throws. No wasted trips at all. They're taking care of business at the line. They need a bucket in a big way here to regain some confidence. There's the double team with Corver. It's nine seconds separating the shot clock and game clock. And O'Quinn slams it in. I love the fact that Neil Aquina is skilled at being a ball mover. He's got a pass first mentality. Oh, nice. Oh, here he comes, and there he goes. Oh, look at him punish that rim. Dishes it to McDermott. And J.R. Smith picks up the foul. That's his first foul. Seven seconds left in the first half. Here's Cantor. It's out of bounds. Last touch by Corver. Got it off in time, but it's no good. A dominating first half of basketball, and so far hasn't been close. Cleveland ahead. Ending the second quarter on a 20 to 7 run. And now let's catch up with David Aldridge, who's standing by from the sideline. All right, Dave. Thanks very much. From one Kevin to another, you guys were dominant in that first half, and you have a big lead, but do you forget about that in the second half? Oh, yeah. We got to treat it like a 0 0 game. I know we're going to stay in the locker room. We got to come out and win the third quarter. If we do that, we feel like we'll be okay. But like I said, this team is tough. We know they're capable of coming back. Well, we'll see what happens, Kevin. Thanks. And now back to the other Kevin. Thank you, David. We'll be back after halftime for the start of the second half momentarily. The 2K Sports Halftime Show. And what an amazing performance the hometown fans are witnessing here tonight. Ernie Johnson, Kenny the Jet Smith, and Shaquille O'Neal. LeBron James putting in some incredible work. He ended up with 39 points, seven big steals, and one block. Kenny, your thoughts. How are the Cavaliers playing? What a brilliant, unselfish half of basketball they just played. Their ball movement was absolutely impeccable. All in all, just beautiful basketball to watch. And Shaq, what are your thoughts on New York? Sloppy ball. Way too many wasted possessions. Chucking up threes, missing them. I could hit more threes than that, Ernie. I hope they're talking right now about getting the ball inside because that's what it's going to take. If they were hitting more threes, that would be a different story. But if if was the fifth, Ernie, you know the rest. That's it for halftime. Glad you could join us as now we send you back to the action for the start of the third quarter. Welcome back, folks. So much to do here in downtown Cleveland. And East 4th Street, right in the heart of it all. Welcome back, everyone, to the start of the second half. Big margin on our hands, but we'll see if that gap narrows down in the third and fourth quarters. What can you say, LeBron James? What an impressive effort today. You know, and as effective as he was at slashing to the hoop in that first half, even better at finishing once he got there. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just his ability to play above the rim. Led to some highlight reel dunks and really pumped up his teammates. And as we welcome you back, we begin our second half. So far, not a tightly contested game, guys. But, you know, anything can happen. On the court for the Knicks, Porzingis and Hernan Gomez are together down low. 
Sessions out there with Tim Hardaway Jr. And it's Lee in at the three slot. And the shot is good. LeBron's got 41. You gotta admire the focus. James not allowing the D to get the better of him. And so it's New York with it. Lee outside. That ball's great assist by Ramon Sessions. Sessions has got his eighth assist in the game. Here's Love. Herman Gomez grabs the miss. Herman Gomez has got his sixth rebound on the night. Here's Hardaway. And then Hardaway with the dunk. Whoa, that'll wake you up. He is such a great athlete. And again, it's LeBron James. James has got 43 points. He's been in control here tonight, helping them get in front with his work from the field. And Sessions kicks to Hernan Gomez. Courtney Lee is on the wing. Here's the three. It's rebounded by Cleveland. Crowder's got his fifth rebound right now in the game. So the whistle blows on the shot and two free throws for the contact right there. And Chris, you could always face up so well from the high post when you played. Which power forward do you think has the best face-up game out there right now? Well, I think in order to have a really good face-up game, you have to have another threat, and that's to be able to drive and finish strong off of one leg. And you, you definitely look at a guy like Towns in Minnesota. He has that. He's so explosive. He can finish with either hand. I also think you have to look at Anthony Davis. <laughs> this kid, he can stretch the floor, shoot out to the three, but also his first step is so quick. The same with Cousins. The fact that he's seven foot can post you up, but his first step being quick off of a pump fake, he can do it as well. And, and don't forget about Blake Griffin. When he gets to that 15-foot spot, you really have to honor his jump shot. So those guys come to mind as far as big fellas that can face you up and knock it down. I know you took great pride in your decision-making in terms of when to shoot and when to drive. Yeah, I, I think your shot selection is your defense as well. You shoot a bad shot, a team like Golden State could have six points on two possessions off of two bad turnovers. And also, I think it shows a commitment to your team for wanting to win. You know, just because you have the green light, why take that when a teammate might have a better shot that's open? So I think it takes a little bit of humility, but definitely a, a basketball IQ that says, wait, this is the smarter play right now. Can you think it on the live and, and while it's going on? So it's definitely important to be able to make those decisions it is yeah it is they're doing work here in the second half three or four to start and it's out of bounds to new york they'll retain possession and here's the 2k leaderboard with the list of the league's top shot blockers from last season fifth Perzingis. and shot blocking is the element of the game that i think he cares about the most that's where he puts in that effort and energy screen by lee they get a hand on it. New York's gone into the three-point range four times since halftime and buried two of them. Clock at four. A three from Porzingis. That doesn't go either for Porzingis. Cavaliers have gone three or four so far in the third quarter from the field. Pretty good start to the hand. The shot's good. He continues to be their go-to guy. If they close this game out, his stamp will be all over this one. Down low. And the ball goes out of bounds. Last touch by Love. Looking now at some numbers for Hardaway. How he did last season. Came in about 14 points per. Three rebounds and two assists. When you have a shooter like him off the bench, it makes scoring so much easier for the bench. Yeah, when he's taking on the scores role for that second unit, then the others can go focus on what they naturally do best. And I love the momentum he's building. Last game, he, he was just as dominant. And defensively, you know he's feeling good right now. And, and, and as the opposing team, you better adjust your scheme accordingly. Sessions up top. He's guarded by Calderon. Right side, Lee. The three. Love grabs the board. Love's got rebound number 12 here already in the game. And you know what? He's just not on his game, no doubt about it. Their deficit isn't totally on him, but he has not been an asset for his team. Goes back up, and Persingas again. Persingas has got seven now in this quarter. The Cavaliers have gone five of six so far from the field in the second half. Tremendous efficiency. LeBron, no luck. The Knicks shooting a meager 37% for the game. Knocked away and stolen by LeBron. Let's it go. Tips it. James on the follow. James has got 53. 
It's just hard to believe that someone can perform at such a high level. They've got to thank him for this lead. And Sessions kicks to Porzingis. New York moving it around. He feeds it to Lee. Nailed from three-point land. Lee's got two now from beyond the arc in the third for the Knicks. James in the post. Working on Lee. No good there off the double clutch. New York's gone three of seven from three-point range here in quarter number three. For three, he can't get that one to fall. His struggles this quarter continue. The D's done a good job. And LeBron gets it to go with the assist by Calderon. Calderon's got his seventh assist of the game with that last one. Sessions passes to Persingas and stolen by LeBron. And here we go. LeBron heading to the hoop. You know, he rips it and jams it right over Persingas. Wow. Oh, come on. You can't allow James to get position down low. Once he does, he's looking to dunk it. Special thanks to Under Armour for that sweet replay we just saw. Another Unleash Chaos moment. You know what, though? Sometimes you can be too open. I think it may have surprised him, and that's why he missed. Yeah, and Kevin Love played the first six years of his NBA career with the Minnesota Timberwolves, posting guarding numbers, I mean, but he never was able to guide them to the playoffs. He was more than ready to join the big three in Cleveland. Lee, a good finish at the rack off the slick feed. Lee's got eight points in the quarter. And when Lee has the ball there, it's over. He's going up. Oh, he's putting on a show for these fans. I can't believe he pulled that one out in the course of an actual game. On the wing, Lee. Here's the three. Again, the miss by Lee. Cleveland's gone one of two from beyond the arc since coming out of the break. Here's James, and LeBron throws it down. And that's just some great vision there from Calderon to see the wide open man for the easy make. And Sessions kicks to Porzingis. Lee gets the bucket. Lee's got 18 points. Look at this. I like this team basketball. Keeping the ball moving until they find the right shot. James, no good. For New York, they've gone 8 of 16 in the third quarter to put their second half shooting percentage right at 50%. And there's the call on James. That's foul number two for him. Going back to your playing days, Chris, you were drafted by the Magic, but traded on draft day to the Golden State Warriors. If you had suited up for the Magic alongside Shaquille O'Neal, uh, <laughs> that would have been something. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, would have, I would have tried to, you know, I think I would have been the first Westbrook. Uh, that was my goal. If I was playing with Big Shaq, just uh, do your job, and I would have ad averaged a triple-double easily. I would have averaged a triple-double when you look at uh, Dennis Scott that would have been on the corner, Big Shaq up top, uh, and that pick and roll right there you're gonna have to guard me or him and I, and I didn't mind throwing it up to a big fella I love seeing people dunk from alley-oop so that would have been fun I would have tried to have Shaq break a backboard every single night but hey can't go back in time man looking at who's out there now for the Cavaliers Jeff Green he's checked in for love come on Shumpert has come in for Jay Crowder Kyle Korver he's checked in for Smith and Dwayne Wade subbed in for Jose Calderon and Chris, we know you are always trying to connect with our fans over social media. Uh, we have a question for you sent in by a viewer who asks, Chris, if you weren't a basketball player, what other profession do you think you may have pursued? Wow. Well, I used to want to be a wrestler <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and other guys like that. But, no, my mother was a teacher, and I, I always was with her in school. Gentlemen, and I think, you know. Uh, I love shot. kids and hanging around kids, so it would definitely be something where I'm instructing kids. I don't know if it would be school or if it would be a gym teacher or if it would be uh, working with kids in some type of way, but uh, I definitely would want to work with kids. I can see you as a teacher. Like, if like if you were a wrestler, like, what would your name be? Like, would you be, like, uh, the you know, Flash? Yeah. Oh, or, man, like, what name would you It was some terrible had? names back there. <laughs> Junkyard Dog, uh, Coco Beware, Ultimate Warrior, <laughs> <laughs> Superfly Snooker. I, I, I know I gave my name back again myself a name back in the day. I don't, I don't know. I, I'd have to figure out first what my persona was, you know what I mean? So, yeah. I don't know. I had to think about that one. But I'm I'm too skinny, man. I really got broken up in that ring. I know that for sure. So, I think I made the right decision. Here's Thompson. Good once again. That makes him 8 for 9 this game. 
just giving up way too many transition opportunities. Inside, here's Persingas and the dunk by Persingas. I tell you what, what a good thing that he showed up today because without him, this thing would already be over. Thompson, and it's Thompson with the jam. Look, this is what Thompson wants every time. He wants to get near the rim and try to throw it down. The Knicks shooting it well here in the third, about 50%. It's tipped. It's stolen by Green. And the Cavaliers pushing it up now. Green leading the charge. And a look here at the shot chart for the Knicks. And looking at this shot chart, you, you can't help but feel that this entire team has played passively on offense. That there has been little to nothing going on at the rim, or, or in the paint for that matter. And when you don't attack the defense and put pressure on them down low, you are making life far too easy on them. That free throw missing. And Tristan Thompson in the middle of player Greg who understands his role. He just plays hard and does the little things. Defense, rebounding, energy. When he's blocking shots and protecting the rim, he is one of the best bigs in our league. Can't reject in for the Knicks. And the second free throw, good. Now, we've all seen this guy's development. Thompson has proven to be a valuable role player. He's exceptional at tracking down rebounds and a more than capable defender. Now, those passes into the paint have to be precise, just like that one. From outside the arc, it's rebounded by New York. McDermott with it, now guarded by Shumper. McDermott kicks to Kuzminskis. They get it back. Oh, smooth. Guys, very good job getting himself in close enough that he could just tip it back in. Well said. Those kind of plays in the offensive glass can tell the story sometimes, can't they? And that set them apart today, guys. Their success with the mid-range. Over to the left wing. Connects from three-point range. Kuzminskis has got his first bucket of the game, and he's on the board for three. And that one's good. Green. Indicative of what we've seen tonight. One team being the aggressor, the other failing to react. You know the saying, numbers don't lie. You can see it up there on the scoreboard. It's clear this just isn't his night. I mean, if they're going to keep him on the floor, I think his best role would be to be a decoy. Rebounded by McDermott. The Knicks shooting around 40% from the floor here. Passes it to Baker. Here's Nilakina. Five points in the game. Sinks the three-pointer. Kuzminskis has got six points in the quarter. Yeah, that's two straight three-pointers they've allowed. And Green gets it to go. Well, uh, this is what he likes to do. Try to break your spirit. But yeah, I mean, you're already getting dogged out there. I mean, and now he's landing body blow. Thompson comes with the double team. New York moving the ball around. Baker, no good. Cleveland's gone one of four and three-point shots here in the third. Thompson dishes to Wade. So he gets the whistle. Contact on the way up and two shots coming up. That's on Ennis Cantor. Wade is one of the best at ever drawing contact. Look, he's solid at getting the D to foul him while he's shooting. And you look at all the accomplishments, all the great moments from Wade's career. No doubt he is going to the hall as soon as he's eligible. One of the greatest two guards to ever play. He misses the free throw. And it's shocking when you look at the numbers that Wade has had over the years. He never won an MVP award. Certainly, Greg played like an MVP in some of his seasons. But the rest of the accolades are there for D. Wade. Uh, all the trips to the All-Star game, the first team, all defense, the all-NBA teams. But most important to him and his legacy are the three NBA titles. And he sinks the second. 
I mean, I, I don't think most fans can understand the experience and leadership that Wade gives to his team and how huge it is. He's a fantastic player who commands respect. They set the pick, and the call is going to be... Yes, yes, it is. An illegal screen. Well, with four turnovers, I won't be surprised if he finds himself on the bench very soon. Kyle O'Quinn is checked in for McDermott. They're making this a runaway. And the only question for me right now is just how big the lead will eventually become. Wade is super efficient in the paint. He's clever at finding ways to score around the rim. It's stolen by Corver. And here we go. Fast break. Corver's got it. And there's another one for the Cavaliers. And when you can outscore your opponent in transition, that's always going to work to your advantage. Yeah, but you have to control the pace. You have to keep it up. Keep the tempo. That's how they built this lead. Here's Green. It falls for the sixth time in seven tries this contest. That's 86%. And of the last six baskets, five have come on the interior. This is just smash mouth physical basketball, guys. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on Jeff Green. That's foul number two for him. Here's Kuzminskis. They can't stop the run with that one. Now Cleveland moving it up. Here's Thompson. And uh, oh, here, there's a whistle. He was going up for a layup. And while it looked like there was some contact, I wasn't sure they were going to call it a foul shot or not. But sure enough, they have. So he'll head to the free throw line. He's made one and missed one so far in the game. And not the guy you want to see at the line too often. Season numbers has him in the bottom tier of the league. No good on that one. He's off on the second. Wow, he didn't really make a concerted effort in the first to get some free throws, but now all that has changed. Much more active. O'Quinn in the post, guarded by Green. His three-pointers off the mark. The Cavaliers on offense. They're on an 11-3 run right now. That one drops for him. Thompson's got nine points in the quarter. And not hard to see why they are giving up points on this run. Just too many good looks from in close. The dish now to Cantor. Poked away. Stolen by Thompson. Here's Korver. That's in, coming off the assist from Thompson. Six points for Kyle Korver. And it just seems that every pass they make is leading to a score. Just great ball movement. Picked by O'Quinn. It's stolen by Korver. The feed to Thompson. Baseline jumper. Again, the Cavaliers score. And they've had assists now in their last three baskets. The Knicks shooting 48% from the field as a team in this third quarter. They double him with Shumpert. Pass to Baker. Pass to Nilakina. Down to five on the shot clock. Kuzminskis kicks to O'Quinn. He drains it as the shot clock ticks down. Wade right side. And there it is for him. Wade's got 16 points. I just love watching Wade take over. He's a skilled combo guard who is exceptional at taking what the defense gives him. There's the three. Misses. And so it's LeBron James making things happen for Cleveland. They kept going to him again and again. And he delivered with a monster quarter. And we'll be back with you shortly. They said I 
And we welcome you back as we get going here in the fourth quarter. The final quarter of play can change everything. The Cavaliers on offense. Next up will be a home game matched up against the Pacers. And that game is the second of two straight at home. Zizic out there with Channing Frye. Then there's Kyle Korver. Then there's Green. So that's who's on the floor for the Cavaliers. And Chris, you had the chance to play with Kyle Korver in Philadelphia. A decade later, he makes his first All-Star appearance. Yeah, he's my rookie, uh, the 51st pick in, of the 2003 draft. Nobody outside of the Korver family expected him to become this talented, but I, I knew he was going to be a heck of a sniper uh, when I saw him practicing, shooting every day. One shot, one shot. And in last season, the Knicks raised expectations with some of those big free agent signings and trades in the prior year. And let's face it, things just didn't work out quite how they had planned. Some would say they underachieved. Hard pill to swallow for a fan base that went into the year with so much hope. And a big problem for the Knicks and their shortcomings last season was their defense. Yeah, and listen, they have some shot blocking, but as a whole, the defense lacked teeth. More than anything else, it played a part in the disappointment of last season's campaign, and it's something they'll be focusing on in the coming years. Now, gentlemen, two shots. Two shots. And that one falls for Nila Kina. And you look at today's players, they have so many more ways to connect with their fans. But, Chris, at times, do you think that that creates added pressure for the players? Um, every player has pressure. I don't know about added pressure, uh, but I do think it's a different time with social media and you can hear everyone's opinion. So I think that you need to focus more if you're an athlete, but I don't think it adds uh, more pressure because whether or not someone can type it or say it in your face or boo you at a game, uh, you know, you're going to hear those words. Oh, the fee was perfect. The timing, the placement, everything was right on the money. And for the Knicks, they're shooting 40% from the field. Stolen. Corver attacking. And there's the foul on the shot. He'll go to the line for two. And there's the call. New York with the foul. We know Corver is known for his lights out shooting ability. He's a long range bomber who continues to shoot at a high clip. Two shots. And he makes the first. All three throws good from Corver. Chris, traditionally, we've had the standard one through five spots on an NBA team, but it seems more and more GMs and coaches are going away from labeling a player to one of those spots, like positionless basketball. Are we going to see more of that? Is it going to work its way around to another level? How do you view that? Well, I just think that the game is evolving, and I think right now you have to have a certain skill set to play, and that means you have to be able to dribble, pass, shoot, and defend. If you think about it, we had players that could just defend, couldn't dribble or throw a ball in the ocean. Well, that really can't work anymore, and you have to have players with the total skill set regardless of size. I do think, though, that you'll always have to have positions. I hated how we took the center out of the All-Star game. You'd never see in baseball, they say, ah, it's okay. This, you don't have to have a center fielder. You could just put two left 
midfielders in there. You right. still have to identify a position and for the tradition and the honor of the game, I say we do that. But we got some pretty big guys and some pretty great guys. So what would you call Dirk Nowitzki? Is he a five? He's seven feet tall. Is he a four? Is he a three? It doesn't matter. He just has game. What do you call Kevin Durant? A seven foot flamethrower? I mean, he's a center, a power forward. I don't know what you call him, but I know that size or positions are no more defined by height. They used to be defined by height. Seven foot and up centers, six nine and up power forwards. Now you have six nine and up point guards. So I love the fact that the game's evolving, but I think the five best players are just going to play, but you're going to have every single size because right now skill set is all that matters. He does not play the score. I mean, he's going to continue to work his tail off on the glass and make plays just like that. Keep it simple, know yourself, and that's how he gets his minutes. He doesn't stop battling for rebounds even when the score is lopsided. He knows his role. And a foul called on the shot. Got him on the way up that time, so he'll shoot two right here. Chris, bench celebrations can be seen as showing up the other team. Is there a balance in your mind of how players can celebrate without maybe rubbing it in the other team's face? I mean, this isn't baseball. You know, if it was, if basketball was baseball, if we hit a home run, then we could trot, turn around, spin. We, we don't, Two you know, shots. you have respect for your players by how hard you play against them, by preparing for them, by, uh, you know, not playing dirty. But basketball, no, 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 uh-uh. No, it's, it, the culture is in the parks. The culture is with guys that play, and uh, the bench should have as much fun. I love watching the benches go crazy. Think of how hard those guys on the bench work all season long and may never get in. What's wrong with being hyped for your teammates? No, I don't, I don't think it should be turned. I love it. Actually, I think some of these benches need to turn it up even more. Hopefully, uh, we get a better show on the bench. Good on the second free throw. A little over a minute and a half of the fourth quarter gone now. Here's Fry, and Fry slams it in. <laughs> he just bangs down the one-handed. Mm -hmm. Two very easy points right here. Sessions against Calderon. Poked away. And it's going to be two free throws. Drew contact on the shot. And not the guy you want to send to the line as Calderon is just a fantastic free throw shooter. And he can't get the first one. Chris, we've seen video review get introduced into the NBA and tweaked as we go along, refining it, polishing it off. And at this point, would you like to see video review expanded even further? Or do you think it's in a good spot where it stands right now? I think it's in a good spot right now. I'm sure if I had time to think about it, there are areas in which you want to go to. But if you really think about it, I mean, the game is supposed to be a spur of the moment. It's supposed to be just uh, players free-flowing and playing. And you don't want to make the game slower by going to the officiating a, a video every single time. Right now, I don't think you should do it on charges and blocks, which is probably uh, one of the most controversial calls in the game. I think where we have it now uh, is good uh, because it gives a balance. And right now, we do not need the game to uh, lengthen in any way, if anything, shorten. And I think adding anything more to refereeing and videos, uh, I think, would just uh, make the game last longer. Just five on the clock. Ball's knocked loose, and it's out of bounds to New York. They'll retain possession. Beasley's checked in for the Knicks. Lee comes in for Sessions. For those just joining us, fourth quarter here. We're just over two and a half minutes into it. And here are the Cavaliers. They're on a 14-5 run. The Cavaliers again can't hit. Green against Thomas. Three-pointer. And it's Lee that time on the assist by Beasley. 
Lee's got 13 points here in the second half alone. Zizic, and he drops in the layup off the glass. The assist totals, Kevin, just continue to grow. They're way ahead in that category. Ball movement has been flawless. Here's Baker. Feeds to Lee. Beasley sets a screen for Lee. This game is going to get even more out of hand unless they start valuing the basketball. The Knicks have gone two for five on field goal attempts in the fourth quarter. Thomas kicks to Baker. He tries for three. No good that time. Cavaliers have gotten into a pretty good groove going 6 of 10 here in the final quarter. And he bangs it home with one hand. And you know, a player with Calderon's experience is going to be able to find the open man on that play every time. Kicks it to Lee. There's Baker, guarded by Fry, and stolen by Fry. The finish, and Fry slams it in leaving the rest of the field in the dust. Well, while he's out there making a play, everyone else is watching. Solid individual effort right there. Baker kicks to O'Quinn. Now here's Lee. D right on him. Here's Beasley. And so he earns a trip to the line. Officials saw the contact and he'll shoot two. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. And the first one drops. McDermott's checked in for the Knicks. That misses, so he splits the free throws. And you look at Ante Zizic, the forgotten player in the big trade. A young center, legit size and strength. And he also played under David Blatt, the former Cavs coach in Europe. Here's McDermott. Hits some rim on the way in, and the bucket's good. Man, he has an excellent mid-range game. Surprising how much room he had to operate on that play. And the shot goes in. And they're beginning to just flat out fall apart defensively right now, especially on the interior. And Zizic has a lot of upside. One reason he was desired so much in the trade. Croatian, part of that golden generation, drafted 23rd overall in that 2016 draft, but ended up staying overseas. And here's the break. The pass to Lee. It's hauled in by Fry. Cavaliers shooting an unreal 70% from the field, making a mockery of this defense. Ripping and running. They have a big advantage now in those transition opportunities. In the corner, it's McDermott. Offline with his three. They've sheared the load offensively. And guys, they put the defense on their heels. You can see right now they're trying to react. And that's what you want when you're in a rhythm offensively. And that one is good by Beasley. Well, you can't find much better shot than that. This could get even more out of hand if they continue to put up points. Wow, Kevin, what a performance we are seeing. Yet another bucket in close. That's how he's earning his point today. New York's gone one of three from outside the arc since we've reached the fourth quarter. Ripped away. Now Cleveland moving it up. Here's Zizic, and that one is stuffed right through. And that's how you make 
a steal count. Turn it into a quick slam at the other end. It was really a case. It looked like Greg Anthony right there, if I, <laughs> if I can say so. It was really a case of a great defensive play triggering some instant mm -hmm. offense. Oh, well, that's because it was terrific anticipation. Also, the quick hands, a lethal combination. That ball's nice feed this time from Jose Calderon. And it's coming easy for them right now. Five baskets in a row in the paint. Baker kicks to O'Quinn. Inside. And that one is good by Beasley. Beasley's got five points now this quarter. And really just led him to his sweet spot for that finish. It's good. And they are attacking the rim and getting great results. For New York, they've gone 6 of 12 from the field here in the fourth and even 50% to the inside. O'Quinn, and O'Quinn slams it in. And a sturdy screen set for him that time, and he doesn't fool around just straight to the rim for the finish. No way for his man to get around that one, that's, that's for sure. You're right. They are precise in how they ran that play. Exceptional timing. That's all good stuff. The shot that time, not on target. And Cleveland the other way now. And he uses the glass on the layup. Nice pass here to set that basket up. So it's the Knicks now. To the wing right side. Beasley the screen. Passes it to Baker. Let's it go with a three. Buries the long range jumper. And as they're trailing in this game, they're, they're trying to stay in it with the triple. They're shooting a lot more of them than they did in the first half. Knocked loose. Gentlemen, two shots. Two shots. First one falls for. Him. So for the Knicks, Cantor is checked in for Kyle O'Quinn. Kuzminskis comes in for Michael Beasley. And Sessions subbed in for Courtney Lee. That's also good, so he hits both free throws. The Cavaliers shooting 71% all in all in this one. They've been brilliant offensively. He hangs in there and cashes in on the second chance points. Oh, they own the interior right now. Ten straight points coming from inside. New York's gotten off four three-pointers in the final quarter, and two of them have fallen. And Kuzminskis gets it to go. Well, it looked as if he would never find his game after that awful first half start, but he's really hit his stride in the second. Yeah, I mean, he's been orchestrating all game at a high level. And you see defensively, when they try to patch something up, he exploits a different weakness. And Sessions kicks to Baker. There's the pick. He dishes it to Cantor. Six on the shot clock. It's stolen by Calderon. Here's Shumpert. The shot's good on the assist by Calderon. Love the aggressiveness. Shumpert isn't afraid of going inside. The Knicks shooting about 42% so far. Baker kicks to Cantor. Sessions against Calderon. Not watching the line there. That'll be a backcourt violation. And they've got a lot of ground to make up, and it's hard to do if you continue to struggle offensively. On the wing, Corver shoots it, and Cantor pulls it down. Cantor's got his fourth rebound with that last one here tonight. Here's Baker, guarded by Corver. Here's Thompson, 
And good that time. Thompson's got 27 points. Look, I love seeing Thompson take it hard to the rim, knowing not many defenders want to get in his way. That's tipped. Thompson comes with the double team. Cantor, the pass to Kuzminskis. There's a screen by Cantor from downtown. And that one is off. And it's the Cavaliers taking it the other way. And Fry slams it in. Oh, fellas, that was a vicious two-hand monster slam. Guys, I don't think there was anyone who could have stopped him on that one. Pass to Kuzminskis. Out to Sessions. This is to Cantor. He feeds it to McDermott. And again, it's the Knicks missing. Cleveland with the ball. They've gone on a 10-2 run, not allowing much. Yes, and, and with this one winding down, it's obvious to everyone who watched it, just a total mismatch and a true show of strength for the Cavaliers. It was a standout performance across the board. I mean, it, it was like watching a cat play with a mouse. They, they were able to do more or less whatever they wanted. And during the long NBA season, each contest important here tonight. Tonight's win will give them four on the season. And they'll take the win tonight, setting the tone in the first matchup of this four-game season series. And you know, when you look at the huge impact he had, just a monster game for LeBron. He had those defenders shaking their heads. There were times when they thought they had a handle on him. And then just like that, he'd go off on another tear. And Kuzminskis gets it to go. This is not the team we've been watching for most of the night. Monster scoring run, but had to do this earlier. Now it shoulda, woulda, coulda, all that. And leaving nothing to chance here on this game-clinching run. Yeah, that offense shifted into high gear. I love the attack mindset. They double him with Shumpert. There's the dish to Cantor. Oh, and that one had the right spin on it, and it is good. Obviously, a mix-up defensively on that possession. Timeout called Cleveland. Guys, what's your take? You know, this is a timeout maybe just so they can pat each other on the back because no other reason to call it. Uh, my guess is that they're just trying to avoid some monumental breakdown after having dominated up to this point. And now, let's present our Jordan player of the game, LeBron James. Yeah, and his performance has been a jaw dropper. He must have been feeling great coming into the building tonight. Because once he hit the court, it was all working for him. He was in a zone. They lost two straight coming into this one, and he knew he needed to put his foot down. He's shown leadership tonight, getting them back on the winning track. seconds separating the shot and game clocks the 17 footer doesn't go for him and New York the other way now the feed now to McDermott it's rebounded by Cleveland and it's Shumper penetrating that's in coming off the assist from Thompson I tell you what the energy in this arena you can feel it well, a well-earned victory, feeding off the energy of this hometown crowd really all night. Now, gentlemen, two shots. Two shots. Two 
First free throw is good. Oh my gosh, I just got that. And so Sessions nails both of them. Now here's Calderon. Shumpert drills the baseline jumper. See that quick shooting from Shumpert? He's a confident scorer in the mid-range. So we see the Cavaliers taking the win here. This game may not have been the most exciting we've ever seen, but you have to appreciate just what a clinical performance they put on. Uh, I know their fans <laughs> appreciated it, and we saw at times just stretches of excellent defense. Potency from an offensive standpoint as well. They, they were pretty much dominant. And now we'll send it over to David Aldridge, who is standing by courtside. David. Thanks, Kevin. Hey, LeBron, congrats on the win. What do you think made the difference tonight? Uh, defense. We made our mark defensively. We understand that for the long term, we have to defend at a high level. We've been doing it. It does start at that end, LeBron. Congrats again. Back to you, Kevin. David, thank you as always. And that's going to do it tonight, folks, for our broadcast. For Chris Weber, Greg Anthony, and David Aldridge. This is Kevin Harlan saying thanks for watching. See you later.